16 of my building the black pearl all scenario version i've got a lot of work to do as far as getting the cannons and their bases in place and and rope work on that that's going to be pretty extensive but the, let me give a, you a flyover of the ship and show you what i've accomplished since the last posting and uh, then i'll go into more detail for those of you that are in the middle of or considering building this ship that may be some helpful hints that can help you with the build if you're a relative beginner in shipbuilding like I am. So you can see I've made some good progress in the construction and uh, you can tell it's starting to look like the Black Pearl or at least in my opinion. There's some things I'll change. I'll, I'll talk about those like these anchors. I did do some aging on them and I will darken that but that's uh, a true patina and I'll show how I did that because that's not paintwork that's actual corrosion building up on copper nothing new under deck it's all pretty much the same I may do some more things as time goes on but for the most part it's it's set and ready to go you can see I've got some of the other things in place these are removable so I may darken those a little bit more they just seem a little bit too light, so I want to weather those some more. I made a little change here. You can see the light colored top. I'll darken that, but I'll show why I decided to put that in place. You can see the ship's bell kind of moving because I had moved the ship a moment ago. Some of the things are glued in place. This little cabinet is not glued in place yet, nor is the captain's wheel. That's why it is sitting crooked, although I do have the, the rope set up and it is going below deck. In the process of just going around and doing some finishing touches, this piece here I need to trim off on the, the two sides. You might not have even known that that was or was not in place, but it's now in place. Just a little fine tuning for that. So that's it for your flyover if you're interested in more detail. Keep watching and I'll go through the steps that I had to do to uh, get some of these things finished. I had started out really well getting the bow of the ship and this uh, railing work. And then I had a, a little bit of a disaster. This piece I had already put on. And... Um, You have, to, you have to trim these vertical pieces off so that it will end at the same spot as this. And somehow when I took some snips and snipped off a piece of it, it sent a vibration through and broke this off. It also broke this off. So I've got this repaired. I ended up putting a notch in this rub strip so that I could get this in a little further. So I've got that repaired. Now I'm about to put this back on, but before I do, I'm going to go ahead and cut these vertical pieces off so they're behind it and then don't stick out below it because I'm afraid by trying to cut it different ways, I'll just break off this real thin piece of wood. So that's what I'm working on now. I think I can Go ahead and try and mark this where I want it to be. So I'm going to have to trim all these off. Probably can't see on camera, but I want to cut just slightly shorter than that so that it will be behind this but still be able to attach to it. This is either going to work or it's going to be a disaster. I think it worked. I've made the repairs and assembled this side satisfactorily. Uh, you can see where the notches were so that really could have been a little lower. I'm considering wrapping rope around this like it's tied on. The thing that's nice about building pirate ships is I'm not going for an exact duplicate. 
and it would always be subject to change depending on damages that happen to the ship and repairs that need to be made. So I'm still considering that. I'm working on this side and in an effort not to split this real fragile timber here, I'm soaking it in hot moist paper towel. The instructions do recommend that you soak that and I had soaked it but now it's been overnight so it's dried back out. So I'm trying to make it very flexible. I finished the bow work. I did end up using rope. That just kind of covers up any imperfections in my uh, limited abilities and somewhat new to the art of putting these ships together. I did, I did struggle. I thought I would be able to do this side without cracking anything, but I still did crack this piece. Again, I notched this out, but before I notched it out, I forgot to notch it out. And that's how I cracked that because this was just too much of a, a bend or an angle to go in there properly. But it doesn't really show. I was able to do the repairs pretty well, and I have both sides done. You can see I've also got some of the belaying pins and their holders in place. And the reason I decided to go ahead and put the belay pins in is those holes were pretty tight and I don't think I'd be able to push them in consistently without breaking off that little uh, holder for them. So I went ahead and put them in place. Most of them are real solid. They're not going to fall out no matter what. And somebody will have to enlighten me as to what this piece is for. I've seen these before. I just don't know what they are. So there's a couple of them on each side. This is where the anchor chain comes out and there's two pieces. I think um, P29 and 30. And 30 is a half piece that fits over the lower half of it. And I misplaced them so I had to make that. At the bottom of the stairs these posts, I didn't like the flat top so I had a bunch of beads that I had picked up here in a little bag from Hobby Lobby, very inexpensive. And I took a real thin dowel rod, put it inside it to hold it, and then I sanded the bottom off so the bottom of it is actually flat. So I didn't use the whole thing. And I will decide what to do with the top later on. Either I'll stain it or I'll paint it. Just haven't decided yet, but I like that uh, more of a finished, polished look at the bottom of the stairs. I've discovered two more areas that you really need to look ahead if you want to get this done properly, and it's this triangular piece that goes here on the ship. The other is this anchor support. It's uh, two pieces, I-5 and I-6. One is a support, and there are etchings on one side. I've glued two together. It doesn't say anything about gluing two of them together, but to get the etchings on the outside, that's what would be done. And there were four of them. So that goes, goes underneath that. However, the area that I discovered, too late for this, although I can probably do it from underneath, is if you go several pages into the future, after building the lifeboat. So you can see the instructions say to drill those two tiny slots and above it also has two slots and the distance and size for those angular pieces. I'll have to do that from underneath but I can do this before I install it. I'm going to revisit quickly um, how I'm aging the anchors, just like I did some of the statues, I think I've perfected it a little bit. It has to be sea salt diluted in water, and I'm going to miss these. And then I'm going to let this dry. I did take a uh, heat gun and force dried the salt water mix and maybe you can see that there's white residue and blotches actually and the blotches I prefer. The new technique that I tried and worked really well was I used hand warmers set underneath this tray to uh, kind of 
speed up the process and uh, maybe make the ammonia permeate. So these are chemical hand warmers. So I just set them underneath my little bowl that I'm using. Set my anchors inside. And this is just all-purpose household ammonia. You will need a lid, so whatever you use. Just pour it in here full strength. It doesn't take a lot, which is a good thing because I'm now out of ammonia. And now we're going to put on the lid. Seal that, and we'll check back in just a little bit. It's been about an hour and 40 minutes. And you can see I'm getting the patina that I want. It's been about six hours. And that's the look I want. It's got a little bit of white salt residue on it, but I can uh, rinse that off. Here the anchors are after they've dried. That's the look I want has a nice patina to it. I may darken it a little bit just to give a, a light dusting with my um, airbrush to tone it down a little bit, but it has that rustic weathered look to it that I was looking for. I've been working on the supports that hold the anchors. Didn't do very well on the slots they said to drill through this. Ended up just drilling holes. I could not make a slot. The pulley, there wasn't much information on where it actually goes, so I Decided to put it right there on the end. I'll darken that some with some more stain. Anchors, you can see it does have some brass and then some brass nails to hold the wood together. It's actually glued, but gives it a nice appearance. I will darken this some with my airbrush. I'll do a, a light misting to, to tone down that aqua color a little. Next challenge is going to be putting cannons in place. Remember I'm using this nail so I'll have to remove the nail, put it in place, drill a hole, and uh, make sure I put the right one in the right place because the holes may be a little different on each cannon. So that's going to be labor intensive for sure. To get these cannon window covers, door covers, whatever you want to call them, there are several pieces and a lot of them are very tiny. They're brass. It's going to look very nice when it's done, but it's going to take a lot of effort, uh, which I'm willing to do. That's what this ship is all about, is taking your time, taking the effort to make something special. This is just one of the little eyelets. Two of those will go on this. And the only reason I point this out is to show you how you can do it. You can do it by hand with a very small drill bit by hand, tinier than this one actually. But this is where a drill press, I think, will come in very handy. These drill bits are 0.3 millimeters up to 1.2 millimeters. The one I'm using is the fourth one over, so that'd be 0.3, 4, 5, 0.6 millimeter drill bit. I've switched to using Gorilla Glue on these, and I moisten with water both parts. And I have these T-pins and I put just a little bit of the Gorilla Glue on it and rub it on the metal and I've let it dry overnight and I think that's going to adhere better just getting this drill bit right exactly where that little hole is and I'm going to hold it real tight Sometimes you can hold it loose, find where the hole is, and then tighten down. Then the next step is to get this eye bolt through that little hole. And these, it looks like they should go kind of vertical. Now they are flat, so once you get that, I'll show you in a second on the underside because it goes all the way through, you can bend this inward. 
and it'll hold that position. And if there's concern about that showing, I could take a very small piece of wood and just glue it over the top of them. So this is going to actually stick out from the ship like that. So they're not really going to be visible, but if you want to go to the work, you can put just a little piece of wood there. But you will want to glue them so that these stay in that position. This next piece, you're going to have to make some decisions on your own. It's part number K4, and there are two pieces to each one because there's an engraving. I can't tell if the rope is supposed to go inside that, so you'd put it together with the rope inside with those inward, but that would be this plain brass piece on the outside, so I'm not doing that. It definitely shows these are glued together and are above the cannon port into the ship. And there's a little notch here. That's how far you put it in. And then the rope goes out of this onto a... So it's centered and then two ropes go into one and go into this. This is the smallest nail that comes with the kit, and this is what's going to attach to the actual ship. So you're making a hinge, and how I did this was to put a clamp on that so it won't pop off. I have these round uh, bending tools. That gets me started, so I'm making that opening just a little snugger so I don't drop the nail out. Now I can hopefully tighten it on there. And now I need to put the bend in it. So what I've done is just taken it out. Similar thing, take the as small as I can get it, clamp this in here nice and straight and now I can put that L-shaped bend that it needs to have. I'll drill holes for those to go in the ship and that cover plate will be actually functional. Here's my first attempt in the, uh, the cannon door cover. You can see this is the support where the rope would actually go back into the ship. That's that two-piece part and it's flat, so you have to cut a, um, not a round hole, it needs to be rectangular. So I just took a, a, a knife blade and kind of tapped it in there and got the opening that I needed. So that worked reasonably well. I decided not to tie a knot on the eye bolts. I just knotted the rope on the outside just because the knot would uh, take up quite a bit of space. So that's how I uh, worked with that. So I think that's going to look pretty good. Now you can see underneath, if you look close, you can see those tabs that I bent. So I'm still keeping open the option of uh, putting a little board across there, but we'll see. I'll make a few more. They're a little time consuming, but anyone that gets into a model with the, this size and this magnitude, you know it's going to take quite a bit of time to complete the ship. I want to mention that in the video I had stated that I was putting these two nail heads for the hinge on the outside and the L shape would go to the inside and into the ship. I completely reversed that upon looking at it a little bit more and I don't know that you can see but the head of the nail is on the inside here on both sides goes out and then the L goes back into the ship on the outside. When I was Starting to do it, I realized, no, that that needs to be reversed. So I've corrected that, and I just want to make special note of that in the video if you're following along and, and considering how you're going to put those on. Here's a close-up, and you can see I switched the nail heads to the inside and the connecting part comes on the outside. 
and uh, I just determined that, that that was the way it appeared to look in the instructions and after I started to put it together uh, I realized that's probably the better way to go. That's it for part 16 of my building the Black Pearl all scenario version. As always, thanks for watching. Appreciate your comments and following along and subscribing to my channel.